December 23, 1913. Just in time for World War I, the world's first heavy bomber takes flight near St. Petersburg. The pilot is its creator, 24-year-old Igor Sikorsky. You might recognize the name from more modern aircraft, like the Sikorsky UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter. So how did a man who started out making bombers for the Russian Empire end up making helicopters for U.S. presidents? He says it all started with a dream, a dream that ended when the Bolsheviks came to power. The father of the helicopter began his life's work in his birth city of Kiev, just a few years after the Wright brothers' first flight in the U.S. state of North Carolina in 1903. Inspired by Leonardo da Vinci's concept, Sikorsky was most intrigued by, quote, a flying machine rising directly from the ground by the action of a lifting propeller. In 1909, with money from his sister, he left for Paris, the cradle of European aviation, to buy an engine and learn from the industry's early pioneers. Back in Kiev, he went to work. His first design never took off, literally. His second did better, managing to lift itself off the ground, but only without the added weight of a pilot. Realizing that a working helicopter wasn't on the horizon quite yet, Sikorsky turned his attention to designing airplanes. There were ups and there were downs. His first plane, like his first helicopter, wouldn't take off. It was only suited to driving across a field. Sikorsky finally flew for the first time on June 3, 1910. The plane had a short lifespan, however. It was soon destroyed in a crash. Sikorsky escaped with minor scratches and bruises. But just a few designs later, Sikorsky was flying as part of Russian army maneuvers and met Russian Emperor Nicholas II. He also earned his pilot certificate. Part of that exam involved completing five figure eights in the air. It wasn't long before Sikorsky crash landed again. His motor stopped while he was almost 50 meters in the air. The failure was caused by a mosquito that had gotten into the fuel and blocked the carburetor. The close call convinced him of the need for planes with multiple motors so that power could be maintained even if one motor failed. In 1913, he rolled out the first four-engine plane ever successfully flown, the Russian Knight, weighing in at an impressive 4,000 kilos. This design turned into the record-setting Ilya Muromets. In 1914, the Muromets became the first plane to lift 16 passengers and set another record by making the trip from St. Petersburg to Kiev, covering some 1,200 kilometers in 14 hours. Germany declared war about two weeks after the return trip, and the Muromets soon set another record. Nicholas II ordered the creation of the world's first bomber squadron, known as the Squadron of Flying Ships. Sikorsky served as an engineer for the squadron, improving the Muromets as the war progressed. But the October Revolution put an abrupt end to this work. Officers of the bomber squadron were being shot, and Sikorsky, whose father was a staunch monarchist and Russian nationalist, did not identify with the revolution's ideals. With many sad thoughts, he wrote, he watched the shores of Russia disappear gradually in the haze as he sailed from Murmansk, which was under the control of British and American troops. Back in Paris, the French employed him to design a plane that could drop 1,000 kilogram bombs, but the war soon ended and his services were no longer needed, so he moved to America. After running out of savings and scraping by as a tutor, he founded the Sikorsky Aero Engineering Corporation in 1923. It had barely enough money to build a single plane and none to pay its volunteer employees. Its first big success was the S-42 Clipper, a flying boat of sorts that was the first to make regular trips over both major oceans, from San Francisco to New Zealand and from New York to England. Back then, air travel was pretty slow. But thanks to the S-42, Pan Am could get passengers from the U.S. to Argentina in five days instead of eight. After his company was bought by United Aircraft, Sikorsky finally had the resources to return to his first love, the helicopter. In 1939, he took off in an experimental VS-300. Three years later, he delivered the first chopper the U.S. government ever bought. Flying from Connecticut to Ohio, he even hovered over a road and asked a passing driver for directions. Nowadays, Sikorsky's company even supplies the Sea King helicopters used to transport U.S. presidents. Sikorsky, who died in 1972, hoped that while the airplane made the world smaller by cutting travel times, the helicopter would make the world bigger by making hard-to-reach areas more accessible. And he predicted that helicopters would be invaluable in rescue operations, which has come true. But we're still a long way from the world Sikorsky envisioned in the 1940s, a world of daily commutes from country homes to city offices by helicopter.